YBY programming classes, which you can access from our website, www.yby.in, allow you to learn programming by doing fun activities. For example, this shopping cart activity where you act like the owner of this bakery store. You ask your user, well, enter one to five to select an item, six to proceed to check out. Let's say user says, I want to, you know, order a milkshake. However, the user is a little bit mischievous. Let's say he says, I want to purchase minus 10 units of this milkshake. See what happens. I say six to check out. I get a very strange looking bill. My shopping cart says minus 10 units of milkshake as the user demanded and it tells me a bill of minus 999.9. .9. Now, I don't even know what this means. Does it mean that we have to pay the user to be purchasing this? Something seems really, really odd. Now, you might wonder why do we even allow the user to do this? But think about it. We can use this feature to allow our user to remove certain items that he or she might have added by mistake into the shopping cart. So let's see how we can do that. Now, in fact, removing items from the shopping cart is a pretty interesting problem because just like in the case of adding items, in fact, two scenarios arise. One, that the chosen food item is present in the shopping cart, which means the user is removing something that he or she previously purchased. Now, in this case, we can remove certainly, but you can remove only until the order that has been put in the shopping cart. We'll see an example of this. Also, if it turns out that the shop, you know, the entire quantity has been removed, which means the resultant quantity is zero, then we must remove the item from the shopping cart completely. Scenario number two is where user chooses to delete something, remove something which is not even in the shopping cart. Uh, for example, you know, we'll see an example later, but in this case, we just have to ignore the request. Now, we will write code to handle both these scenarios, but before that, let's see some examples. Let's see how this whole thing, you know, uh, plays out. So, Case one is where user has, for example, ordered three units of milkshake, five units of eclairs, and then at that point, user says, okay, please, you know, chooses eclairs and puts minus two. So, which means user is requesting to remove two units of eclairs. Now, this is the easy case because five units are present. I can go and remove two at the end of this. My shopping cart is going to look three milkshake and three eclairs. Next scenario is where user says, okay, look, I've chosen five eclairs, all right, but I want to remove seven of these. Now, clearly, this is not possible. However, what is possible is that we can remove five because five is less than seven. But that means that my eclairs will be empty in the shopping cart and then we must remove eclairs from the shopping cart. Otherwise, we'll end up with a zero entry on the shopping cart. The third scenario is where, for example, user has chosen milkshake and eclairs, three and five respectively. But user chooses, you know, say says that I want to remove four units of cupcake. Now, this is strange because user hasn't even purchased this. So, which means that we are going to have to just ignore this request and that means the shopping cart shopping quant remains completely untouched from this now let's see how we can do all this in code how can we enhance our program to do all of this first let's look at the code and then we will actually start coding this now remember the way we added you know uh, things in the shopping cart was through this piece of code where we first determined whether you know uh, the item is in the shopping cart or it's not so if it's in the shopping cart we just you know added that amount Else we added, we appended to the list, which means we increased the list. Now something similar is going to happen, but this all holds only good for quant equals to quant greater than zero. So which means that I'm going to take this code, indent it in and put an if condition on top, right? So this is basically the existing code. I just put the condition here and you know, this print also tells me quite neatly what's going on. The second scenario, which is a new one that I'm adding, in fact, is quite similar. Like I said, two scenarios, uh, you know, come up within there. So I could put, I'm going to put another if there. I say if quant is less than zero. Now, again, I have to determine if this particular item is in the shopping cart. And if it is, then I must figure out where it is in the shopping cart, which is what this line does. And now, like I said, I can't just blindly remove the quantity that has been asked because I want to make sure that my final quantity doesn't become less than zero. That makes a lot of sense because, you know, that's not possible also. Now, so the way I'm going to do is that I'm not going to say, I'm not going to remove quant, but in fact, I'm going to remove a quantity that is the minimum of the abs of quant and shopping quant index. Now, this may look a little bit confusing, but let's just go back to this example, right? The, the, the one we looked at earlier. Remember the shopping quant index in this case, shop, yeah, shopping quant index in this case will be five and the number to be, you know, the number that would have been ordered would be minus seven. Abs of minus seven is seven. So abs is basically in looking at the number without the sign. Seven and five, we took the minimum of these two, which is five, and we go and remove five units from the shopping cart. So that's what that statement does. 
uh, you know, which is here. So I'm going to introduce a new variable. Uh, we'll write all this in code later on, so it becomes more clear. So I'm going to remove this from the shopping quant. But if the shopping quant has become zero, I must go and delete both, you know, the, this particular item from shopping cart and shopping quant. And I'll do that using this particular command called del. Uh, del basically removes that particular item from the list. Now, having done all this, I'm going to print remove from the shopping cart, remove quantity units of whatever I ordered. So let's see, you know, I hope this gives you an idea, but let's get a better you know, view of all this by you know, actually putting this in code. So as I said earlier, uh, I have to be a little bit careful on indentations here. So I come in here, I put a, you know, indentation if say quant is greater than zero. Now, if this happens, I'm going to have to indent this entire thing inwards because remember, this is the case where quant is more than zero. Now, next scenario is that I'm going to put say, if quant, less than zero. Now, this is the case where I'm going to have to, you know, remove things from the list as required. So I'm just remember the part of the code is actually quite similar. So I'm going to take this just as a, you know, uh, starting point. So I'm going to just do this and put it here. Now, again, this is a scenario where this particular thing is in the shopping cart. So I say, okay, if it's in the shopping cart, then I, you know, I find out where it is in the shopping cart. That's the IDX as we had done earlier. Now here I introduce a new variable, say remove QTY, say remove quantity. And that is going to be, uh, you know, minimum of the abs value of quant. Because remember in this case, quant is negative. So we must put that abs. Otherwise, uh, you know, we are comparing a negative number to a positive number. Always negative number will be minimum. But we must put this abs here. So I put ne negative min of abs quant and shop ping, uh, you know, shopping quant, Q-U-A-N-T, I-D-X. Now, basically, this is the quantity that we can remove. And having done this, so I'll just come in here and I'll say shopping quant index is equal to, you know, shopping quant I-D-X minus the removed quant. Now, note, minus the removed QTY, right? So it's, okay, let's be a little bit careful here. Okay, so I, I do this. Now I must check whether my shopping index, I mean shopping quantity has become zero. So I go and put another condition if shopping say Q U A N T I D X is equal to zero because that's possible. Now in this case, I must go and delete both the shopping cart and the shopping quant at that index because remember the shopping cart and shopping quant must be in sync. That's why I must delete. Uh, you know, both say shopping cart, say IDX, uh, IDX, and I'm also going to delete say shopping, uh, you know, quant IDX. And also given, you know, this condition has happened, I can put a small print statement here. Uh, notice the indentation again. So I'm going to put this inside over here. This only happens if, you know, uh, so indented inside here. So if only happens if menu, you know, if that item was in the shopping cart, because only then it makes sense to remove. So I'm going to say removed from shopping cart. Uh, and again, here removed QTY units of menu order minus one. So let's run this code to convince ourselves that this is correct. I'll run through the three, three scenarios we spoke about. First, let's say I choose milkshake, say 10 units. Then I choose ice cream, say four units. Now I'll try to remove the ice cream. So I say, you know, two, and this time I say, for example, minus two. Now I expect two units of ice cream to be removed. And indeed that's what it says. Now I can verify this by saying six. Notice I purchased four ice creams in the beginning, but two got removed and hence my shopping quant is two for ice cream. That's scenario number one. Now let's say take scenario number two, where I choose, for example, let's say one, I choose, for example, 10 units of this. I choose one again. This time I try to remove, for example, I put a negative number. So I put say minus 14 of milk. Now, clearly I can remove only 10. So it says I remove 10 from the milkshake because it picked the minimum of the abs of quant, which is 14 and shopping quant index, which was 10. Now, if I were to see the shopping cart now, it is completely empty because I purchased something and I have removed it. Let's take another scenario where let's say I create, you know, so I say one, say 
two, uh, then I put three, say four. Now I have purchased one and three, and I let's say try to remove. For example, I choose five cupcake, and I try to remove let's say six units of this. In fact, nothing will happen. Uh, you know, and we'll just move forward. So if I look at the you know uh, the uh, shopping pond, uh, shopping cart, it's going to be milkshake and chocolate because I tried removing cupcake which I hadn't even purchased. Now, if you want, you can actually put a message here to tell you that, you know, this is not, uh, nothing's going to happen. One thing I wanted to notice very carefully is that we have put this code for quant greater than zero or quant less than zero. These two if conditions, if quant is equal to zero, then nothing's going to happen anyway, because it's going to go into neither of these, right? We can try that. So let's say I, you know, I say, for example, one, and I put say zero quantity, it just you know exists this because neither of the conditions comes true which is logical if you think about it now one change we can also make is that we can you know when we are first giving the message one to select six to proceed and you know how many units wish to proceed i can ask negative number to remove from the cart so that the message becomes clear uh, you know and let's see if yeah so i think let's see if we do this if I run this code, I get this message, you know, so six to check out. So let's say I choose two. It says negative number to remove from the card. So if I put, say, minus three, I obviously didn't do anything because I hadn't added anything into the list, right? Now, I hope this has become clear for you. Before I, uh, you know, wrap this up, I, I do want to highlight that there's a nice compare and contrast. The function that we are using, del shopping cart index, is in fact exactly same as delete index of shopping cart from scratch. Because this goes and removes item index from shopping cart, and that's exactly what we are doing. Barring the small difference that indexing starts on zero. That's common anyway. If you like this, and if you think you'll enjoy activities like this, do check out our website because there's lots and lots of materials in there to learn Python programming through fun activities. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.